Hey guys, what's going on? This is Nasa, AKA the real estate guru. I'm not the guru, I'm a guru because I actually do this business. Uh, Jason, what's going on? Janice, uh, hello. Um, yeah, so we'll just wait uh, till we get a few more people on and from us getting a few more people on, we'll just start to um, take some questions. Um, I see my folks' face. Oh, um, second. All right, all right. Yeah, just, you know, basically, I mean, we just going to freestyle it up, you know. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, yeah, just please type them in. Uh, one second. Mike, what's up, bro? What's up, man? Let's see. Wholesaling with the okay. Going just going into my Facebook group. Devane, what's going on? Uh -oh, let me let's remember request. I had to approve. What's going on, man? Hey, appreciate you joining, bro. Cortez, bro, appreciate that, bro. Hey, um, if y'all want to, you know, start putting in your questions and all of that, we could start, you know, getting this thing um, basically started. I mean, everybody's, you know, trying to wholesale and, you know, get that first deal, and that's cool. So I just want to be assist by just assisting you guys by just, you know, answering questions. As far as my business, um, I want to say we probably got about <clears throat> choking my own spit. No, I don't have COVID. Don't hit me that. Um, I want to say we have about four to deals right now. The, uh, we're waiting to close. You know, we're still closing deals. My a lot of my time, man, is going towards my um my rehab. Uh, bought a new house, going towards my rehab. So a lot of my time is going towards that, man. So yeah, let me see. Okay, here we go. Finally, getting some questions in, guys. How to find institutional buyers, hedge funds, buyers? Go down to the auction. Buy town, see them at the local auction. If you um, see them, so everybody's local auction works different. So you have to find out how it works in the state. Okay. So <clears throat> tips for raising private money, build relationships. You're not going to walk into a room and say, hey, I need money. And people are just going to give you money. It does not work like that. All right. So let's get that idea out of our head. So with that being said, what you want to do is you want to build relationships. Um, now, tips for raising private money, you want to build relationships with people at RIAs. This is how I got my relationship. Build people at RIAs, and then I did partnerships with other rehabbers to get the connections. And then once I got the connections, I started you know, going out on my own, doing my own renovations. But that's literally how I got my connections and all that. What's some advice you give some start on how to go up getting buyers and learning what kind of properties they want. Man, I would tell you to go ahead and go get sellers. Don't even focus on buyers. Buyers are easy right now. And it, it, even with this COVID mess around, you, you get a good deal, people will buy it. All right. But if you want to focus on buyers right now, um, <clears throat> you can start off using Facebook Marketplace, fire part of our wholesalers, um, find buyers, the um, so Facebook group. I have multiple videos on my channel um, about finding buyers, by the way, but you can go to like um, biggerpockets.com marketplace to post buyers. You do need a paid account to post buyers, but it's worth it if you have deals. I have gotten um, relationships buyers off of um, Bigger Pockets, but Facebook marketplace, once you find the deal, you know, it's, it's, it's going to sell if you find a good deal. I got a few, okay, um, yeah, and I get those calls to um, Divine and reference to like, yo, what kind of properties you want? I look at it if it's a deal, to be honest with you. I don't have a, a cookie cutter product. 
You know, I, I just tell people, hey, look, just make sure it's in the first time home by a price point. Um, so in Charlotte, under 250. And I will take it on as a rehab. I got a few questions. First, what do you do when a seller has issue with letting you back and they suspect you are trying to get in? Okay. I got a few questions. Um, sorry, the uh, no periods, commas, nothing. First, what do you do when the seller has issues um, with letting you back in that property because they suspect you're trying to get investors in to sell it? Okay, I, I have that discussion up front. I set that expectation up front. So I tell them, I say, hey, look, I'm going to have to get my money partners and contractors in one or two times, okay? Two times the most, probably one. And normally my deals are deals, so that's what I tell them, okay? One or two times I have to get my money partners and contractors in. You're not lying because you're literally getting your money partners and they're going to get their contractors in, you know? So, yeah, that's what I tell them. But one to two times, I tell them that up front while we're signing the contract before the contract because I had some that say, hey, look, I can't let you in because I don't want to scare my tenant away or I don't want to do this. I want them to do that. So I got to make sure my number right for me to wholesale that joint sight unseen because I've had, I've, I, I buy property sight unseen. So, yes, I've wholesale sight unseen as well. Um, two to four deals per month. How many people do you think you need to be marketing to? Um, I'm doing just ringless voicemail and texting, bro. So like five to 10,000 can bring you two to four deals a month. You know, there's five to 10,000 here, but every market is different <laughs> here. What do you use for selling emails for buyers? The text blast and what dialer? Okay. That's a great question. Hold on, let me pull it up. So I'm using with the mail campaign for buyers, bro. You find one that works for you. I'm using Sending Blue. Sending Blue is S E N D I N Blue, B L U E, sendingblue.com or whatever. I use their email marketing house and they have SMS. I just Googled some, some that are pretty good. Um, so that's a good one. Um, you can use them, but if you Google like top 10 email marketing services, it that's you, you can find them. Um, it's another one. Uh, hold on, it's another one that um, I use too. Um, for oh, let me see the education side. Um, I don't know, I'm looking for it, I'll be forgetting the name of it. Hold on, um, that ain't it. Well, yeah, you, you get the picture, but yeah, if you just, I'm using Send in Blue, but there's multiple out there. The reason why I use that one, because they got an SMS service. As um, far as dialer, I'm using, uh, it's a, a mix up between Call Tools and Mojo. So, yeah. What marketing are you using that's getting the best feedback? SMS, texting is the best. Best contingencies to put in your purchase and sell contract. That's a good one. I just I just do a 30-day inspection. That's me. I just do a 30-day inspection. If I can't sell a property 30 days, normally can't be sold. But I just do a 30-day inspection. Okay. So, you know, um, and I let them know from there. And like during the COVID mess, man, there was a property that I had to let go. This one, this is prior to us being on shutdown, and we shut down and yeah, man, I had to let, let it go, but I, I had an inspection period, you know? And that inspection period, I do my, I'm do doing my due diligence. Best way to scale as a up-and-coming wholesaler. All right, so if you have something to scale, you got to make those key hires. You got to position yourself where you're not on the phone. That phone, those phones will burn you out. So you want to position yourself where you're not on the phone. Um doing all the pre-screening. You want to get that done. You either want to be growing the business or talking to just motivated sellers. But getting off the phones is the first is that first step to scaling. You know, so that that I think that's your first hire, getting off the phones. Who do you use to do RBM? 
durutouch.com, durutouch.com, D-O-R-U, touch.com. That's who I use for RVM. All right. Would you use a burner phone as a dollar, a prepaid? Yo, that's a good question. If you're starting out with limited funds, why not? I was going to do that back in 2011, right? When I found I found out about creative real estate in 2010. I was going to do that in 2011, just go get some prepaid. I think I did do it to put it on some stuff, but I found out about Google Voice and then once Google Voice, it was I was I was good with that. But with Google Voice, it's a free account. I've had seen people get their Google Voice suspended if you're just texting random people. They will um, they will start as a spam. So, um, but just getting started out, you can use a Google Voice. But after you do your deal, you definitely want to get some type of um, a voice line to go to your phone or something to do, or a dollar to do cold calling or a text message platform. You still following 70% rule repairs your fee to make offers. I feel like I'm losing deals by following this. Yeah, bro, you are losing deals because Mike, I know Mike personally, and uh, we have something to escrow. Um, but you here, you can in Charlotte, you can probably pay a little bit more. Right now with covert, you still have to, you know, um be careful. But here, you know, you don't really have to follow that here in Charlotte, North Carolina, because it's so hot. Um, it's starting to cool down, but right now I'm still following conservative formulas because things are still, you know, a little skeptical, you know, and this, with this COVID mess, is not getting any better. What do you do to sell the property besides Facebook Marketplace, Bigger Pockets, Craigslist? I have a buyer's list. I built the buyer's list. As you wholesale properties, you should be building buyer's list. You know, so I have a buyer's list. The way I built mine was kind of like the old school way. And um, I have an on carrot site for my buyers. Do you use a one page um, P&A um, purchase agreement and assignment or do you use two? I have a two page contract. I have a one page assignment, two page contract. You want my contract, you go to realestateduru.com, opt in that joint. And we're going to give you that um, contract for free. Or you go to the Facebook group, Wholesaling with the Duro. And boom, you get that contract for free. Um, it's in the file section. Diana, what's going on? Thank you for joining me. But yeah, that's it's in the file section. So um, I, to, to, pick, to get my contracts. But I have a one-page, I'm sorry, a one-page assignment, two-page contract. I know how to find leads and build a rapport, but my closing needs work. What do you suggest? The issue is, man, I really think, bro, you're not in front of motivated sellers, man, because once you start to get in just motivated sellers, you can't mess that up. You just get, you got to get in front of people that be the way their house, you know, and once you get in front of that, bro, you can't mess that up. So, I think that's the problem um, that you're facing. So, yes, I strongly um, recommend getting in the front of motivated sellers. Keep Continue to do your marketing, bro. Um, and, yeah, you got to get in front of sellers that just, you know, want to do something. They have to do something. If looking at pre-foreclosures, would you make an offer if the mortgage and lien attach? Okay, if looking at pre-foreclosures, would you make an offer if there's a mortgage and lien attached with some equity? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I mean, if they got a mortgage, they got liens, yeah. A pre-foreclosure doesn't have a mortgage. I don't know if you're asking if they have a lien. Would I still make an offer? Hell yeah, I'll make an offer. 90% of the liens can be resolved, right? It's like probably less than 10 that, less than 10% that it's like, they can't get resolved or they just owe so much. The IRS is very hard to work with. And in my past few situations with the IRS, they normally want to see the person's HUD statement and what, how much money they're getting back. Um, so, yeah, it just all depends um, on what the lien is. But I definitely take those on. 
What do you think about using the call service to qualify leads? That's not a bad idea. I, I, I haven't heard about a good one these days, but that's not a bad idea, man. You know, if you got the data to keep them working or you're doing the marketing to keep those calls coming in so they're constantly screening, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea at all. So um, I'm totally not against that. And let me, let's go back to this question, bro. Um, Pre-foreclosures. That's a great way to get like subject to. Um, the house I live in right now, that's how I started off. Um, subject to. I got this house subject to that I'm living in currently. So that's a great way to get um, some, some, some rental properties, houses to live in, or even to wholesale. You know, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna find some for some properties that don't have a lot of equity per se, but there's value in that 30 year mortgage. Investors typically we don't get 30 year mortgage typically. Local banks they do 15 years. Internet banks they'll do 30 for investors, but local banks do 15 years. So if you got a property that's let's say is worth one hundred and fifty thousand, and they owe one hundred and forty-two thousand, but they got a payment of seven hundred dollars, right? Seven hundred fifty dollars with tax insurance, but it rents out for um, fifteen hundred. You know that can be a deal to somebody. That's hey, look, that's you know that rental income. I would pick some. I would put something up like that. You know, but that's me and my strategies. If seller's mortgage is higher than ARV, would you still take that deal? As a subject to, I've have done that before. Yes, I've have done that before as a subject to. Some people, um, for the people who did it years ago, of course it paid off. Would I do it today? It depends on that payment on that loan. It's got to depend on that payment. If they, if it's, if the mortgage is higher and they got a dumbass payment, and when I say a dumbass payment, meaning that. Um, it rents for fifteen hundred, and their payment is thirteen ninety seven twenty seven cents. I wouldn't do that deal. I wouldn't. I, I I wouldn't do that unless I wanted to live there, or I knew the the city was going to come build a new soccer stadium next door, something like that. So yeah, other than that, I wouldn't take it. But I do look at those deals. It all depends if their value in that payment. If you're doing a subject to deal. If you're just straight trying to wholesale the cash, no, it's no deal. There's no deal there. You should refer them to an agent or, you know, tell them, hey, look, you, you got to probably do have to do a, so, a short sale or something. Do you have contracts for subject to and seller finance a deal? You go to realestateguru.com. That contract can be used for subject to. It can be used for seller finance. You will see that on the contract. Normally what I do for my contracts, though, I don't. I might have to do the addendum if I'm if I'm working with an attorney I'm familiar with. I just send them the terms, the terms of the seller financing. If it's subject to, I'll just put in the purchase price of my contracts subject to. And if seller's getting one thousand to fifty thousand, I just put seller to get three thousand dollars at closing. You know what I mean? But I just put subject to in the purchase price. I keep it simple. Looking for my first deal. Working my regular uh, job, I'm assuming. Been dialing 50 a day when I get home. Should I go SMS and ring? Okay, if you're going to focus on something, what, all right. If you're using the dollar talking sellers, at minimum, 50, been dialing 50 a day, that's not a lot, to be honest with you. Be real with you. You need to be 100 plus per day to find that motivated seller. You know, if you do that five days out of the week, you might get. Two to three, one somewhere between one and three deals, depending on your market. The majority is is normal that the majority of the people reject your offers and don't want to deal with you. That's totally normal. The majority of the market. Okay, so currently I'm selling my house, right? So let me give you an idea. All right. So if you as an investor contacted me, I'm not in a situation where I need to sell. I want to sell, but I'm, I don't need to sell. And that's a, you, we have to deal with people who need to sell so you can make money. I'm not, I don't need to sell. Yes, I have two mortgages 
um, right now because I'm paying another mortgage, another personal house I'm having getting done. All right. If, and if, all right, so if somebody can't offer me the price that I want, I can just live, list with a realtor. I can do that because I'm not in the dire need to sell. You understand? So you're looking for properties that are on sale, not for sale. This property I'm in now is for sale. It's not on sale. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in a desperate situation. I have been motivated on properties before where I've been like a desperate situation. Hey, buy this, buy this. And I I could have got more in the open market. I could have got more if I did this, but I had a cash offer in front of me. So I've been in that situation before, but right now I'm just not in the situation. So there's no need for me to deal with um an investor when my house is let's say worth 157 or 160 and you're gonna offer me 80 90 is there's no need to deal with you i can just list it on the open market for 150 and probably get multiple offers or something so you got so you gotta go out to more leads it took me eight months to get my first deal keep that in mind do you have a video recommendation on where to learn more about subject twos I do not, right? Because I learned from some local guys. Um, it's a strategy that's been around for decades and decades and decades. So, yeah, um, I don't have a recommendation. I could tell you Tony Robbins Sr., um, he he has workshops and stuff. Of, you know, his his stuff is pretty thorough, very good, very well, so very good. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you can you can uh, if you follow Max Maxwell he he normally posts his stuff so but yeah man I like Tony's stuff man because it's very thorough Jay Parker in Charlotte North Carolina Jay Parker's on Facebook too he has a Facebook group it's like the Jay Parker Network um, he has meetups too in Charlotte but his stuff is that's what I learned subject to from to be honest with you Jay Parker here he was locally. But uh, Tony Robbins Senior stuff is really good. So, with that being said, I strongly recommend you talking to someone like that. I don't necessarily like to just focus and teach on that because what happens is people will just you you just talk to come across sellers who will give you their house. Like you that that happens, okay? Like this house was given to me, like literally given to me. I didn't pay the seller anything close; it was given to me, and I did what I said I was going to do. I told them, hey, look, I just Right now, the house is upside down. Five years, the market should be okay. I'm speculating. Five years, the market should be okay. At that time, I paid off for selling. Five years happened. I refinanced the loans in my name, and sellers were ecstatic. You know, they were happy. There is never a late payment on this property. So their credit looked good. Now it looked look, look like they got a paid off house. You know what I'm saying? So I did what I was supposed to do. But what happens is people go out there and take on these properties knowing damn well they I they can't fix up they can't afford to fix up the house and they only have X amount of payments or they can't make one payment and then the house goes to foreclosure and they end up in court. So I don't like to necessarily strategy. I do do it, but when I take on the property subject to I put it on the automatic thing, um, automatic banking thing where they get their payment every month because this person trusts me to not screw them over. You know, they, they could have done a short, short sale. So my keeping my word is important to me. Do you email or text your buyers? List? To be honest with you, I'm, I email them. Um, I gotta get gotta start doing more texting. To be honest, though, that's the new wave. Texting is a little better for buyers. How do you get over the fear of contacting owners? That's a great question. Let, let's let's talk about that, right? How do you get over the fear? For me. It was just thinking about staying at my job the rest of my life. At the time, I was at the time I was in my twenty twenties. So therefore, I looked up like real estate was hard. It took me eight months to, to get my first deal. I couldn't quit on the third month. Couldn't quit on the fourth month. Couldn't quit on the second. But I kept going, and it's consistently working every week. And I just looked up. I wanted to quit. Yeah, I definitely wanted to quit. No, that's normal. What you're going through is normal. It was things I didn't want to do, but I was reading self-development books. I was listening to audio books, and there was only like one real estate podcast around at that time. Shout out to Sean Terry, Flip to Freedom. So I would put that in my mind to stay focused on my goal because at my job, I would look at people 10 and 
20, 30 years my senior and say to myself, nah, bro, not me, bro. Nah, I, ain't, I, I never envisioned my life like that. So I did what I had to do. To me, the fear of me staying at that job multiple decades, nah, bro. I ain't running the call soon. I'm good, bro. Like, uh, you know what I mean? So I ain't doing it. This ain't this this is not the 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 in the last chapter of my life. I ain't gonna be Nasa from the call center. Nah, bro. I ain't going out like that. So that fear had me contact the owner. What you have to do is f- figure out your why. Why are you even doing this business? Why, why, why are you doing real estate? Is real estate for you? Real estate may not be for you. Does that mean success is not for you? Hell no. You might be the best cake baker in the goddamn world. And you can actually make a lot of money, um, you know, buying some cakes. I I get cakes sent to me from a company that station in New York or other places. They had a hell of a cinnamon cake. But you just got to find out what it is you want to do. But um, my, my recommendation, Janice, man, what you got to do is figure out your why. Why are you doing this? For me, let me just tell you the things I've been able to do. I've been able to travel around the world, take my father to the Super Bowl. Um, I'm in the midst of a house. Of that I own now. I bought another one. I'm rehabbing that one. Getting that one looking all good and right. But I have multiple rental properties and, you know, I was able to create a seven-figure business. Man, at a job, my last job, making 38K a year, I'm a college graduate. That's my highest paying job. So, yo, come on, man. Like, for me, it was a no-brainer. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to. Many days, many days I didn't want to call sellers. Today, many days I don't want to pick up the phone to call sellers, but I do it because I remember my why. Maybe try putting your why on your board in front of you or, you know, in your mirror somewhere where you see it every day and just got to get to it. Do you virtually wholesale? I personally do not virtually wholesale right now. I do not. I do not. There we go. I have a motivated seller in my family. But there's a lot box on their home. They haven't lived there in four years. They are absentee owner. Wow. ARV 180. More, uh, mortgage is 140. Mm, okay. Charleston. Girl, you need to figure out how to keep that property. I would approach them and ask them, hey, if I make payments on this property going forward, would you... I don't know, deem me over the property or would you? do you want the money? Like, why is the property sitting there? You got to figure out why is it sitting there. Or just sitting there like, hey, look, this is um, it's sitting there because, you know, it's, it's not really damaging our bank account to keep it. It's not bothering us, et cetera. Because you're talking about banking for four years in the mortgage. Are they paying the mortgage? You know, because sometimes I've seen people that, you know, they're just in a financial situation. They can keep two or three vacant houses for years. And I'm like, yo, you guys... Sellers thing, but they keep the lawn manicured and everything. So there's no motivation there. Um, matter of fact, man, there's one story in particular. The guy inherited a mobile home, right? Sounds cheap, right? A mobile home on a lake surrounded by houses um, well over a million dollars, well over. The land for these properties um, are high six figures. He got offered, he was getting offers as high as 800 grand for his mobile home. For they can not, they all basically what they do, they trash the mobile home and just throw it like this trash mobile home and build a house for like 1.5, 1.60. And yeah, like he just wouldn't sell. Like, oh, I don't need the money. I'm okay. You know, he didn't live too far from the property. Um, he was well off. You know, he didn't need it. Like, yo, man, I don't need the money, so I'm going to just let it sit. You know, last I heard, the highest offer he got like a million dollars. This was years ago. I don't know if he sold it or not, but you do have some people that's not in desperate need. Find out why is that property sitting there, and would they be able, would they be willing to do something creative with you? And when I say creative, hey, are you open to taking your equity in monthly installments? What do you mean? If I just paid you monthly the, for the property, you know, and – you got to explain it to him. Like, okay, so what are you talking about? I'll make all the payments going forward and you deed me over the property. That's the only way it's going to work because as a cash transaction, it, it doesn't really work. I uh, 140 as a cash transaction because that's 140 plus closing costs 
fixing it up, holding it, and then that 180, you got to minus buyer's closing costs, uh, realtor's commission, and, you know, your holding costs. So, yeah, as a flip, it's no good. As something creative, that could work. Thanks. We're a title state. Would I use my title company to do my deal? Absolutely. You would, If you're in the title state, you would use a title company to do your deal. What are your thoughts on wholesaling? Wholesaling works. Wholesaling is great. I do wholesaling every month. I mean, it's a great strategy. It's the, My first real estate deal was a, a fix and flip. I lost $7,000. My partner lost $7,000. 14K total. Okay. I lost that on my first deal. Wholesaling, you don't have to worry about none of that. No contract is involved. You're literally selling a piece of paper. Wholesaling is great. Wholesaling, you can wholesale anything. So it's not specific to houses. There are people who find struggling businesses, okay? Struggling businesses of people, the struggle of people went out, etc. They'll put that business under contract, okay? Then they would assign that business to an inbuyer. How do they know what business to put on the contract? Business that they can get on a discount. And then they'll assign that contract for a fee to the inbuyer who builds that business up, okay? So that, you can wholesale anything, you know? So wholesaling will always be around. I mean, ShopRite is the end buyer in that chain, right? You know what I'm saying? Some some products they get direct. Some products they get through uh, um, a middleman. Like ShopRite, like a Walmart, a Target, you know, everything. Wholesaling is everything, you know? Well, now, when Walmart buys from you, being that they're not franchised and the Walton family owns all them joints, they, they buy them both. So they buy that wholesaling prices. Like, yo, look, we buying this. So you got to give us this price. We, I know you say you're going to give us that price, but now you got to give us this price because we're buying this. But yeah, wholesaling is, you know, I mean, it's always going to be around and it's great to do. Been putting out banner signs every month before it works. It's suggesting how to catch more eyes. Um, busy intersections. That's what I, when I just doing busy intersections. You want busy intersections. You want busy um, highway exits. At the end of the exits, we're actually going to the neighborhood. Please don't. Go on the goddamn highway and get hurt. Don't do that. And when they get in, you know, get coming into the city, them busy joints, you want those. You want those. What's the cost of a 10,000 test campaign? I don't know, probably what? $500 or so? I'm thinking. Do you know either any seasoned wholesalers that you think would make great mentors in the DMV area? I'm a newbie in this game. All right. It depends. Um, the people who have time for you normally have a mentorship and coaching program. So if you're willing to spend some money, then there are probably some people out there. If you're saying, hey, I just want to tag along, you're going to have to find those people locally by adding value. That's what I did. You know, the mentors I had in this business approached me with the offers. And I'm like, yeah, help me, please. So, But they approached me because I was working towards getting that first deal. Janice, I'm going to use Text Blast to warm the sellers up. It should be easier to talk to a seller that knows what you want. Do I mentor? Do I coach? No, I don't have a mentor and coaching program. Totally focus on business. Charleston is booming, bro. Man, Charleston is booming, bro. Man, Charleston. Uh, all right, let me give you a little history on Charleston. Charleston was one of the biggest slave ports in America, right? So... That should tell you the city is on water. However, gentrification just, you know, um, is taking over every major city. And it's now those houses in the water are extremely expensive, you know, waterfront property. But yeah, man, I've never been there, but I heard it's beautiful. But I have read and heard the multiple stories of how they had demolished and stuff. Um, private projects are getting, I'm sorry, um, public housing projects and things like that get sold to private investors and, you know, they do condos and things like that in that neighborhood and it's pushing out the um, the low-income families, et cetera, which is pretty sad. 
And, you know, a lot of those low income people are, are black, unfortunately. So, but Charleston is booming right now. How do you find cash buyers? Second time or probably the fifth time you got it. Bigger pockets, Facebook Marketplace. Um, right now, due to the COVID, there's probably no meetups. So we're doing things virtually, but that's how you would do that. So um, bigger pockets for a Facebook Marketplace, Facebook groups with investors in it. So if you're in Houston, Houston um, real estate investors, whatever. What did your first successful marketing campaign look like? The type of letters I wrote out. I want to buy your house at 123 Main Street. Please call Nasser at my Google Voice number. Now you can do please call or text, you know, because some people feel more comfortable texting. But that was literally what I did. If you Google hand, let me see. Let me see something. Because a lot of people were using my stuff. Of course, they didn't give me credit for it, though. Um, I'm, I'm Googling it to see if you can see it on Google. See, my, my, my postcard used to be on Google. Handwritten postcard. Uh, real estate. Okay. If you Google handwritten postcard, um, real estate investors, and look at the images, You'll get an idea what I used to. I, I don't see my particular one um, up there, but it, my particular one used to be on this joint. But um, I put that on the postcard, short and simple. What and um, I don't. I can't. I don't know the responses, man. But I just kept at it for eight months, man. And eight months after eight months, my campaign was successful. I did my first deal. Do you use prop strings? I absolutely do. You go to durudata.com to get your seven-day free, uh, free trial from durudata.com. Seven-day free trial. So what you do, sign up at durudata.com, download as many leads as possible, then you get like your, your 10,000 leads a month, and you can start working that. Of course, you don't have money to pay for the whole 10,000, but start you know working a piece at a time. Not a social media guy per se. Can this be done without social media? Absolutely. You don't need social media to wholesale houses. Hell yeah, it can be done. Real estate has been around before, like me. Like, so yeah, like, yes, you can do this without social media. Man, I was in this mastermind. It was guys without social media or barely on social media making six figures a month. Like, yes, it can be done without social media. When you first started, how do you overcome failure? Just keep going. Failure plus reflection, reflection is very valuable. I say that to say when you fail and you can sit back and realize, like, how why did you fail? How did you fail? And learn from that. That's valuable, man. That's more valuable than winning. So therefore, um, but you gotta have that reflection part. So, and but with me, I just kept going, man. A good book is failing forward. Felling for that's a great book. Try to get an audio book, man. I just kept going, bro. Again, Lionel, I just thought about being at a job and realized, like, no, that was not my life. I'm not going, this is not the end of my life, bro. Being in the goddamn call center for the next 20, 30 years, nah, bro. I ain't going out like this. Nah, son. Uh the site director was making like 70. And it took him like, I think like seven years or so to get there. I mean, which is not bad looking back at, you know, at the time we was like, man, so we gotta wait seven years to get 70 grand? Nah, bro, by 30, I was clocking 100, bro. By doing this though, but I was working on six figures by 30. You know what I mean? I, I remember my site director sat me down. She was like, yo, you mad ambitious. I could see in 10 years you making um, $100,000 or so. 10 years from that day, bro, I was, I was, was gross at seven figures, bro. Like, yeah, but she seen the ambition, but her math was all the way off. But, yeah, bro, I knew what I wanted, bro, and I knew, like, I was not selling for the situation I was in. Bro, when I was in the call center, bro, 
I would have had a paycheck with no comma, son. What's more motivating than that? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Do you think owner that have abandoned properties would be a motivated seller? Sometimes. Sometimes. I can't really say it. Because I've seen them where they have abandoned properties and they're not motivated to sell. Bro, like this one lady, bro, just told me, don't you ever call me again. I know the house is sitting vacant. And I'm not doing nothing to it. And it's in the prime neighborhood. And she literally let it sit for years and years and years and years and years and years. Yeah, I mean, there's, do you think the owner have not, they could be motivated, but they could not. It just all depends on the situation. Earlier in the call, I don't know if you heard me when I, the guy with the um, he was getting offered um eight hundred thousand to a million dollars for a mobile home on the water. He was like one of the last one or two mobile homes left. All the rest of the houses were one point five, one point six. Bro, he was getting offered eight hundred to a million for um, he wasn't living; he inherited. Bro, I would have sold it if I inherited a mobile home. Bro. They could have offered me four hundred thousand dollars. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have looked at the contract. I probably just would have signed. I'm just being real. Me. He was getting offered eight hundred to a million. He wouldn't sell. He didn't need the money. He didn't sell. It was no issue to have the money. Oh, if I sell it, well then the money just sitting in my bank account. Oh, I'm good. So just because people have multiple abandoned properties, don't mean they're motivated at all. Mike, what's good, bro? Do you think it's possible for a 16-year-old to start wholesaling? So what advice would you give me? That's dope, Asia. Yes, it's possible for you to wholesale houses. Legally, you cannot sign a contract until 18. Some laws are made to be broken. Contract, you don't go to jail for contract law. Contract law is a civil matter. So I like the fact that you are... You know what you want. You want to do this business? Yes, you can do it. You know, absolutely. I I'm re I read about stories of kids are in their wholesale houses. Um, so my focus is, you know, I mean, I don't know what state you're in. Um, in some states, 16, you know, kids are driving and all that. In Jersey, you had to be set 17 to get your license in Jersey back when I was coming up, 16 to get your permit. Um and I know in North Carolina, I think it's like 16 to get your license. But let's say just, you know, walk for dollars, drive for dollars and look for abandoned houses, beat up houses, houses with tall grass, houses that need work. You know, look for that, man. And yeah, hell yeah. So it's do that. You know what I mean? Like definitely go after what you want, but definitely start wholesaling, Asia. Southern hospitality is real. I'm finding a lot of receptive people during my cold calls in North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, North Carolina is a, a beautiful state. Charlotte's a beautiful city. She is now divorced. Children went off to college. Both parties left the property vacant. She pays the tax of a year, but not the mortgage. Oh. Yeah. She paid the tax, but not the mortgage. Why is the bank not foreclosing? So. Or is the bank with a foreclosed? So I would see what's going on, you know. Um, but yeah, man, I would definitely try to get that property. Let's see, bam, bam, what's going on? Yeah, I'm the joint of this joint. <laughs> Look at my eldest son, CJ. So, do you suggest clouding times to secure the deal? Debating over if the seller wants to back out. Luke, another wholesaler trying to undercut me on record. The PC at the title company will work. Um, I've clouded titles if they're in the hot neighborhood or if I think the seller's getting cold feet. So, yes. Um, if you think you got that feeling, definitely cloud the title um, by doing a um, notice of a real estate agreement. And I've done that multiple times. And I got I got paid a year later for one. I was supposed to make – I had a 15K wholesale fee. Seller backed out. Years later, the seller paid me like $7,500 um, for that. You know, they was mad as hell because they backed out because they, you know, um, tried to sell behind my back or whatever. 
Hey, Ryan, I appreciate it. Yeah, man, I cut out for like three years, man, focused on real estate, but now I'm back, man. Yeah, man, Brian in the house. Oh, who Brian, though? Bama, who Brian, though? Let me let me know. Ways to do virtual type deals without business selling face-to-face at the house. You want to close over the phone. I, I don't do virtual wholesaling, but some properties I don't look at. We close them over the phone. When I say close them over the phone, that means pre-screen them, get them closed over the phone, get a contract email to them, ASAP. Do you stack lists? Currently, I do not stack lists right now. I use PropStream. It's very good. My wife is a realtor and likes it because we can look up properties in other states. You can look up properties nationwide. That is correct, Jason. PropStream is official. Durudata.com. What's a low-key mailing list we should pay more attention to? Um, Bad credit. Hit up my man, Eric, at Flip This Real Estate List. Eric Torrente, I flipped this real estate list and um, that bad credit list. What do you use for skip tracing? Uh, I use durutouch.com. Durutouch, like touch it. T-O-U-C-H. So I'm also doing deals with meeting and selling face-to-face, especially with markets. You got to close them over the phone. That's all it is. You got to close them over the phone. That's all it is. Hey, one second, guys. Give me like two. I, I got to get something real fast. All right, guys. I'm back. I had to get some water. Sorry about that, people. Thank you for being patient with me. Thoughts on doing deals without me and sellers face to face, especially Mark. You got to close them over the phone. I mean, you can do it. You just got to close them over the phone. It can get done. How long do you work in the call center? I was waiting for that question. That's a good question. All right. How long did I work in a call center? I moved to, okay, I graduated college 07 from Jersey. Shout out to Jersey. Um, King University. Um, I uh, was a communications major. I actually interned at, um, MTV, the VH1 news department in the city of the town square. All right. I knew nothing about being in the car center, bro. Graduated from college, sold the house up in Jersey. I moved to Charlotte in 08. It took me like two or three months to find a job. I found a job um, in a car center, right? I did three months there. All right. I did three months there. That shit was terrible, bro. That shit was terrible. And that car center, there was a lot of fornication going on, too. Um, they, I, they got bought out. It used to be Convergence. Bro, it was a post going around social media like last year. Like, yo, what job had the most fornication or whatever? People from all over the country was saying, like, Convergence. Because what they do is they basically own the call center, and they would get contracts for, like, cable providers on star and different stuff. But so I did three months there. Then I did two years at Wachovia Wells. And then I went to another investment company, the call center. Um, so from 08 to 2011, I did call center work. And I was burnt out, son. I was like, yo, this can't be my life, son. So three years of that. And then I got into processing life insurance. And that's when I started moving up. And, um, I made some real money, 38K a year. But so like three years of call center, which was um too much for me. Uh, I don't cold call much right now. I definitely use VAs. That's my other eldest son. Well, no, that's my, uh, my this is my eldest. So I, I get y'all mixed up, bro. I'm sorry. So this is my eldest son here. And the other kid that you've seen, that's my son too. He's my youngest, you know. Um, but yeah, Michael Jones in the house. Appreciate the love, bro. And yes, this camera is very crispy. I definitely thank you for recommending this camera. You know what I mean? My other camera was very ashy, but now it's very crispy. Thanks to Max. Shout out to goddamn Max. You know, thanks to Max for, you know. Hey, I need to thank Max for getting me back on the internet. Because he's the one who got me back on the internet. I was done with this shit. 
Oh, Chris Jefferson is LeBron and Max is Kobe. Ah, I like that. Okay. Long as I'm joining, y'all build my self esteem up. Like when somebody made that comment on Max's chest, y'all don't know what y'all did to my ego. Because in, in reality, you know, both these guys probably have 50 times as much money as me and uh, 97 times as much success as me. You know what I'm saying? So, like, y'all boosted my internet ego up when y'all made that. When y'all called me Jordan and y'all sunned them. <laughs> Shout out to goddamn Max and CJ for taking that joke very well and not getting upset. Thank you for not kicking me out to text, uh, the text group. Really appreciate that, guys. Can prop stream be used on mobile devices or tablet? I think they got the app coming out this month. I'm not sure. I don't. I didn't. I don't use it yet, but I, I think they're working on that. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap this up in like ten minutes. Can you walk us through your first? It was me handwritten postcards and just send them out. I was handwriting postcards. If you go on my YouTube channel, I got a whole series on getting your first deal. But my first successful marketing campaign was basically driving for dollars. If you go to durudriving.com, durudriving dot com what will happen is you'll get the deal machine app and you'll get my free trial and all that but i was doing that on pen and paper if you get that app it's so much easier bro so much easier bro telling you how do you estimate repairs as far as square footage to price per foot also do you use basic set of numbers for say a roof or plumbing etc i don't estimate repairs i just go in there and make a low offer um Estimate repairs came with experience. I go in there, I make a low offer, bro. Just get the property low. You know, typically, this is what somebody told me. Um, for repairs, typically just use $10 per square foot. So if a house is um, 1,500 square foot at $10 is $15,000. But most houses, I'm gonna be honest, most houses probably need way more than $15. But this is back in the day when you can get stuff cheap. That, that formula did kind of work. But now, I would probably use twenty to twenty-five dollars a square foot in you know fixing up the house. How? Shaw, Max Bertha. How can I get a job at a car center? This REI ain't working. Hey, bro. I'm gonna tell you like this, bro. I would rather you go outside and um, hold signs, bro. Or sell newspaper. Do they still sell newspaper on the corner? I know in New Jersey when I left, they did. Uh, oh, wait. I don't know. I think maybe they ate thing online, but, bro, I would not recommend working at the call center, bro. Don't do that to yourself. Is it a bad sign to see a lot of realtors for sale signs in a neighborhood when you're driving for dollars? 30, 33% of the area had owners selling? No. You can still make money in that area. When houses are sitting, is because they're overpriced or the condition of the house. You can still make money in those areas. What you have to do is pull up the sold counts to see what stuff actually sold for. Because I've seen that before where houses, people are on the market for 160, but the closed sales are at 130. Okay. That tells me to sell a house, you have to be at 130 and not 160. Like melotypes, how many sent out? I don't, re I don't recall all that, man. From because I did my first deal in two thousand, uh, two thousand eleven. So I don't recall. I, I, I worked at it eight months straight. You know, I wasn't tracking all that information back then. Do you ever feel like you can be yourself on the phone, and face to face with someone? Do you feel like you have to adjust your tone and demeanor? I adjust my tone and demeanor for what that seller is. If that seller, pay attention. If that seller voted for Trump, if I go to that seller's house and they got Trump 2020 on that joint, I'm going to talk about how great Trump is. Okay? If that seller has 2020 Biden, I'm going to talk about how great Biden is. So I adjust per the seller. We're in sales. Sales and marketing. So in sales, you have to adjust for the sellers. I remember, right? I went to go buy a car, and they, with um, what they, I told the people my name, 
they got somebody with a Arabic name as well to match me. But we had nothing else in common. And the conversation was, was trash and ended up not buying the car from them or nothing. But um, that's just a sales technique. People do business with that they like and trust, okay? So, yes, you have to um, adjust face-to-face -face in your demeanor. Damn, I am so sorry about the YouTube and the live. I apologize about that, guys. Hope that's not happening. Let's see those J's. <laughs> y'all clowned me last time I showed y'all my J's. Y'all hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all clowned me. Hold on, let me show you my J's. One second. Hey, yo. Damn, these my team Jordans, right? Hold on. Let me get my light back in. These are my team Jordans, right? Y'all clowned me so hard last time. But I don't care, and I'm still going to wear them. Shout out to Team Jordan. Ah. Hey, thank you, Calvin. I appreciate the love, bro. You match the CJ, yeah, definitely giving back the knowledge. That's why I could teach. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that. We try to be, man. Max is a giver. That's just his spirit. He's a giver for real. He be... He, he give it for real, bro. Like, he met me and shit, and um, he became my friend. So you know that motherfucker give it. So, but yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. That, um, he good, good dude right there. How do you know when to start hiring? Um, when you have enough leads in and you have enough money in the bank account to make that first hire, you got enough leads coming in, you want to get off the phone to put somebody to work, and, you know, to, you think you can support them um in that position where they can feed their family and etc. But yeah, man, when you're ready to scale, man, that's when it's time to start hiring. Bruh, people was getting carried out in stretches of the call centers, bruh. Yo, I was only in the call center for three years, bro. People was getting carried out in stretches, bro. I'm dead serious, bro. I seen somebody get carried out in stretcher, bro. I seen somebody else come back to work, right? He had a doctor's letter, bruh, staying like, yo, he couldn't work at a job no more, bruh, because the stress was too high. I said, what? I ain't never seen nothing like that, but yeah, you got to get out of there, bruh. That cost of the man. That cost of life is crazy. How do you, I'm joining y'all, how do you get an ARV for mobile homes? I'm um, saying with Comet, when you pull up comps, and Pop Stream, they'll tell you, like, yo, it's a mobile home or a manufacturer home. And that's, you just see what the other stuff is going for, you know. And, yeah, you go from there. I hate going to the house with <laughs> Bro, we got to do what we got to do, bro. I was on the outskirts of Charlotte, bro, one of the houses. Somebody had a gun. Well, fortunately, I grew up in that rough type of environment. So when he was asking me questions, I wasn't, I didn't get nervous. He's like, man, oh, yeah, what you doing he has guns and everything. Like, what you doing here? Uh, I'm now, so I'm here to go look at the, the, the house down the street. Yeah, I'm going to look at the house down the street. Oh, okay, come on. Let me let me get my um, my father. And we went down, and he kept his gun out. But the tenant, you know what I mean? He had that same type of hostility with the tenant, too, because he ain't like the tenant. So, you know, that's some people's personality. But, hey, man, you know, I could have went left, but I appreciate it then. Give me an example of giving you a low ball offer. Duplex estimate 120 is gutted. It has five damage. What is your offer? Okay. That's very vague because Charlotte has duplexes, duplexes that sell for like $300,000. Duplex. So 120 would be a good deal, even if it's gutted and fire damage. You figure put 100 k into it, it's 220 and it's worth 300 That's still a good deal for somebody, right? So. All right, um, I will point out that the house has the house is gutted and fire damaged and put comparables in front of them and make my offer. I will use facts to back my offer. Sometimes when I make a little offer, I don't just, I, I tell the seller, hey, look, I'm not saying this just for the sake of giving you a little offer. Yes, their house is selling for $130,000 in your neighborhood. You want 100. dollars 
However, I back out the numbers. I have to play, I have to fix this house up. Your house needs 40,000 to work. Okay? So, the house needs 40,000 to work. And you're at 100. I need to be at 70. And I'm going to put 40,000 into it, right? And no, I'm not making uh, that whole 20,000. I have to pay the realtor commissions. I have to pay not only the realtor commissions, I have to pay closing costs. I have to pay my money costs. And those costs come out of that. So for me to make this work, this is why I'm coming up with this offer. If they don't budge and they're not the person for me, I follow up for them. I follow up with them. If they don't want me to follow up with them, I just take them off my list. Bro, they clown me, bro. Hey, hey, big hey, hey, it's my big bro. Bro, Jane, they clown me, man, because of the they was they said they was team joints. I ain't know the difference, bro. I'm over here now, bro. They said these joints was team joints, man. They ain't the real joints. I was like, yo, they the hornets colors, man. That's they I them. I like the joints. They was on sale, man. They was like, nah, they was the young kids. I, I ain't take no offense to it, because when I was young, we used to clown people too. So it's all good, bro. We was heavy in that fashion, so I get it. No, I don't have a team of cold callers. I focus on uh, text and uh, RBM. Biggest spread, 246K, 246,000. What do you want to be as a child growing up? That's a good question. Shout out to my boy, Chris. Hey, yo, make sure y'all follow my boy, Chris Monroe, on Facebook. He be, like, giving out information and stuff. Hey, yo, so look. As a kid, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a business owner. I wanted to be a real estate investor since I was 19. Um. Like, so everybody else in the hood wanted to be like rappers and the girls wanted to be models. Even back then, yes, we had the video vixers. So we had like the magazines and they would be in videos and they would be in like um, the, the magazines um, that used to be going around the hood and the video vixers is what they were called back then. Now today they had the IG model thing. But yeah, nah, if anybody wanted to do that, I wanted to be a real estate investor. At 19, I wanted to be a real estate investor. As a kid, I wanted to be a business owner. I wanted to own my own business. I wanted to own a um, a hair salon in a barbershop. It was like like a salon, like a barbershop on one side and a hair salon on the other. You know, so I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And um, yeah, that's what I wanted to do as a kid. How did you learn to do contracting work? How did you get into it? Contracting work. I need I need clarification. What contracting work do I do? You know what I mean? Oh, fix the flips and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Um, I did it. My first one, I lost seven thousand a piece. My first one, um, so fourteen thousand. But I partnered with somebody in my second go around, and for partnering with somebody, that's how I learned how to run rehabs and do that. It still gonna get hectic. How do you properly come a property five plus years, two hundred square feet, home, same bed, bath, one for sale, take two loads, cost? That's basically what I do. You know, that's basically what I do, man. Um, if I got a 1950 house, I'm not going to come into a 2008 build house. No. I'm going to look for other 1950 house, like square footage, um, <coughs> like bed and bath to count the house. <coughs> <coughs> My boy said RVM in Florida is a no-go. Okay, so yeah, Florida, that's the state where they just sue each other for just no reason, for looking at them too long. So, yeah, it's a no-go there. Um, but here in the line, I do it. <laughs> Yo, he said I used to, hey, this, this ain't for y'all young people. I used to have fake cross-color outfit back in the day. It was called Cross Creations. I got clown for that one. Hey, bruh, yeah. <laughs> cross-colors was the joint back in the early 90s. I, don't, I was in grade school with cross-colors and shit. I think I had one cross color outfit and like a, another shirt. You know what I mean? I was fly as hell. Picture day, I came cross colored out to take my pictures of. You know, word up. That is wild that many kids have entrepreneurial spirits and society try to suck it out. That is true. Society will try to suck out the entrepreneurial life out of your kids. Now, entrepreneurship is a cool word. It's a very cool word. People talk about it. Um, now, so it's more acceptable. Back then it wasn't, but I just lived in the house with supportive parents. I lost my mom at 14, but 
my father, he was still supportive. He's like, yo, you can be anything you want to be. You can go out and do it. So he knew what I wanted to do. And he actually pointed me in direction to real estate, not the real estate me and you know about, the, the traditional way that he knew about. So shout out to him. I took him to the Super Bowl back in uh, 2014 when it was in Jersey. All right, y'all, we getting off an hour. I got to cut this off. So let's stop the questions. Um, um, let's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer the rest of these questions, but we gotta cut it out after this. No more questions. Do you call someone in, in probate if the executor had the same address as the person who passed? Yes, I would call them. Whatever numbers are filed, yes. Because what happens is somebody sometimes they can't afford the property no more. When would you suggest someone new to wholesale start doing sub sub two deals? How much on reserve would you suggest someone have? Okay. For a rental property, I suggest you having a, a minimum of five thousand per property. Okay. All right. If you got two thousand, but you you got two thousand reserves, and you got to deal with seventy five thousand equity, should you pass it up? No. You want to shoot for that five thousand, but definitely have reserves. Because things do go wrong, and sometimes tenants don't pay, and sometimes things do break in the house, and you are responsible for that. Do you need an actual special to check out this house, or can you use a contract? You can use a contractor. If you're new to wholesaling, don't call nobody. Just get the house low. Focus on getting the house low. What has been the most challenging issues you face as a landlord? I don't manage my properties. Back when I was newer, I was going through a lot of rough shit. But, I mean, I use property management. Management. Um, I've been, I mean, of course, you get bad tenants. I can't say it was a, I mean, I had some properties I that I got left with at Roche Motel. Absolutely. I bought, I bought Roche Motels, too. So, I mean, I can't say it was the most challenging issue. I mean, because I have property management, I don't deal direct with my properties, you know, so I can't really say. I don't play games no more, bro. I don't play games no more, cool kid, the white man. Um, back in the day, we was rocking hard on Madden, okay? We would play Madden back in the day. Y'all love 2K. The generation love 2K. Back in the day, NBA Live was the joint. 2K was still kind of newer. So we was rocking out on that NBA Live. Hard, you know what I mean? Especially when if you got online, you could play people online. It's like 03, 04, online play? Bruh, yo, we was talking hella, hella smack on them um, joints. But yeah, now nah, Madden is, um, I used to play Madden, and we play NBA Live. I know <clears throat> y'all are so much um, 2K now. You know, 2K came a long way. 2K started out on Sega Dreamcast. And, um, but yeah, now nah, I was Madden all day back then. I, I don't know. They, they got 2K football too. I, I don't. I don't play anymore, bro. But yeah, back in the day, that's what it was. First step to take it down property yourself instead of assigning. Great question, Allison. All right. First step, you want to line up financing. Okay. Are you going to do traditional financing? Like so, for example, I know a guy, good friend of mine. He came across a deal for a hundred thousand. He knew it was worth one ninety when he bought it. OK, so he lined up traditional finding uh, tra traditional financing and moved his family in. OK, and they got out the apartment, and got into the house. Now he has a ninety thousand dollar equity. He can get an equity line. OK, so all right, line up. If you can't do traditional financing, you got line up financing from private investors or companies like Carolina Hard Money dot com, Carolina Hard Money. They um, definitely loan the Carolinas. Lima1capital.com. Lima1capital.com. I believe it's, um, I think it's Linden1.com. Line of finances so when you come across that opportunity, you can tackle it down. Because you have the right mindset, um, you want to start keeping the stuff. I mean, I've been in business for 13, um, no, I've been full-time for eight years. And I've been involved in real estate for 13 years. I should have way more rental properties than I do, you know, so, um, but I didn't have that mentality that you have. So line up financing, but nobody told me about local banks. Nobody told me about financing coming. I just thought of 
Wells Fargo mortgages, and then I learned about the creative stuff, and I was going out to these big wholesale checks or wholesaling when I should have been keeping a lot of stuff. How do you word how do you word your rental numbers? Do you use it one? Okay, the one percent rule is if a property costs a hundred thousand, you be all in for a hundred grand and you rent it out for a thousand. That's one percent of what that property is rent for. Me, I try to shoot for two percent. I just go at the numbers that you just can't turn down. Me, I want equity. It being that I look for properties, I want two things. I want equity and I want cash flow. I don't just go for one. I want both of them. So um, appreciation is the icing. You know what I mean? I do buy and appreciate areas. That is the icing. But I want both. And even with my equity, sometimes I got to force the equity by fixing it up. But that's that's the way I look at the deals. Cross comes with a member only jackets and straight. <laughs> yeah, she old school like me. She from back in the day. We some old heads. Y'all know about the cross colors. Members only. I didn't. My father's had a member only. I didn't have a members only. I wasn't for the, the young people coming up in the nineties. But the suede buck shoes. Them, we had them hush puppies though. I had some hush puppies from my eighth grade graduation. You couldn't tell me nothing. You know what I mean? With some, I think a Tommy Hilfiger outfit or some shit like that. But yo, hey. Everybody, thank you for joining. I got to wrap it up. Um, thank you for this live. You know, I'm going to try and do it weekly uh, if I don't drop any other content. But um, make sure you go to the whole Southern with, um, with the Duru Facebook group and uh, follow me on Instagram, Real Estate Duru. All right. Um, that's it. Peace.